Before I divulge too much info, this is just what special vehicle I am sat in, let me give you a bit of history and context as to where Land Rover all began and why this car is so special. So going all the way back, 1947, a guy called Maurice Wilkes began the early design and development work on what is now known as the Land Rover. 1976 is when the one millionth Land Rover rolled off the production line. Needless to say, in that time and by sheer quantities of utilitarian cars, it became a icon of the British manufacturing industry, but also an incredibly important cult car amongst the owners. So much so that these cars began making their way into films. Recently, the Land Rover made its way into the latest James Bond film, Spectre. And that is exactly what I am sat in right now. I am sat in an exact replica of the James Bond Spectre Land Rover. Behold its sheer mass. <laughs> yes, the scale of the road tank that I am in right now. I mean, you know, even by modern day 4x4 standards. The conventional Land Rover is pretty small. I don't know what they've done to make this so insane. So when I refer to they, this has been built by a company called Rich Brittle. You can find out all about these cars if you go to brittle.co.uk. These are the guys that made this build. 90% of the work has been done in-house, uh, but they've gone to some of the pros to do the important stuff. Engine upgrades, 195 brake horsepower. Brakes are from Bowler. Bowler are the guys who did the Bowler Wildcat, which was essentially a sort of Dakar-based Range Rover for the road, which is insane. And Bowler are also the guys that made the engine tweaks, uh, giving this behemoth 195 brake, bags of torque, and very unique to this car is a fully automatic gearbox, which makes driving something which is conventionally agricultural in ethos very easy, very beautiful daily driver. Now, for those of you who don't watch my channel that often, uh, I do also have a Range Rover. Uh, it is the 2014 V8 diesel. Beautiful car, and by conventional road standards, fairly large this thing would eat it i think you could put, i think you could use this as a pickup truck to recover the range rover and put it in the back you could stick it in the in the rear of this thing if it wasn't for the fact you had its tractor sized spare tire in the flatbed they must have had to have built this in a shipyard it, it has so much road presence i think you could play chicken with a freight train and you wouldn't have to move it looks like Batman did the Dakar, and this is his support car. If you were in a supercar right now, you just go, squash that little bug. Now who's winning? Just take your 0 to 60. Shove it, son. Here we are. Dynamically, not fabulous, but good Lord, does it make up for it in presence and drama and attitude. What's funny is the cab size is, of course, conventional Land Rover. So, you know, fairly compact, still practical, but the exterior, the flared arches, its ride height, the flatbed, everything has just added up to this thing being on agricultural grade fertilizer. It's, it's just popped out of every crevice. On top of that, of course, this is the James Bond Spectre Edition car. Now what that means, it has been styled to the nth degree to look as close as possible to the very car that features in Spectre. So that means incredible external cage where you can mount accessories to, strap down luggage, supplies, all fixed on this. Ride height, huge, suspension travel, massive. I think you could run over another Land Rover with this and I think it would just ping it out. But I think the best thing about it is, and what I come back to a lot, 
is before you've even driven it, before you've even stepped in this thing, which, take it from me, is a sense of occasion in every word, is that it makes you smile just looking at it. It even has rope. It has film prop rope on the very front of it, which, for me, gives it this hybrid feel between, yes, James Bond Spectre, but also it's a little bit Indiana Jones Tomb Raider vibe. And for someone like me who grew up on that, to see this big chunky film set rope hanging off the front of it is so cool. Now, people who watch my channel most of the time will know that I spend the majority of time filming in sports cars, supercars, etc. And by convention, just inherently, they have fantastic road presence and head-turning ability. I'm not used to that kind of attention when I'm driving a 4x4. This thing is turning as many heads as my bright orange McLaren. Uh, people love it. They see it and then they double take and they're like, is that thing actually impacting my retinas as much as I think it is? Because it's in this satin black paint. So at first it might disguise a little bit of its size, but it's overwhelming presence. I mean, I'm in this and every now and again, I just look over its hood just to make sure that my road positioning isn't going to interrupt the presence of oncoming HGVs. Its footprint is dictated by the fact that it's been modified so much. Now, the tires this thing has on it, you could squash an antelope and I don't think you would recognize. You'd be like, I think I just ran over a pebble. The interior on this, well, it certainly isn't standard. Again, as much as the exterior has been customized and flared out, the interior is as crazy and as on par with the exterior. We've got iridescent green accents, neon green stitching. The backs of these seats are all plated in matching green accents that just so happen to match the coilovers on the suspension. Most important on this car, because as you approach it, you can see a lot of that because the ride height is so high. And so as a full eventful package, I mean, this thing just scores a 10. Now, you're probably wondering to yourself, how much does this cost? Well, this particular car is coming in at 125 thousand pounds sir don't get me wrong no small change so what are you getting for that well number one I mean you are top trumps when you say you are driving James Bond's Land Rover I mean how cool is that so you're certainly buying bragging rights and what comes with that price tag is exclusivity because you know this is a totally custom-built car other than the actual film version I don't think many more of these exist so rarity exclusivity some people are just die-hard Land Rover fans there are purists out there which like to have them as they were from factory and that's cool but there's people out there as well who like to make them the best they can be and arguably this has taken that platform turned it up to 11 and it comes with a permanent smile on your face and that for me is what I keep coming back around to with cars it doesn't matter if it's a fast supercar it doesn't matter if it's this incredible road tank if it puts a smile on your face that is ultimately up to you how much it's worth and you know people by and large they enjoy cars and they like seeing the out of the norm and that's what this is this is a sense of occasion it's out of the norm and people love it and that's what I love about this car it is a big friendly giant it's fantastic anyway guys as always thanks for watching I'll see you next time ciao